In this video, we're going to learn more about NumPy arrays, starting with how we can get unique items and counts back from any array. For this example, we're going to create an array that contains a couple of duplicates. Next, we're going to print np unique and pass in the array. This will give us back the unique values in this array. If you want to get the indices back of the first occurrences of each unique element, you can use the following argument. Return index and set that to true. Now, when you run this, you're going to notice two arrays in the console, one that contains the unique elements and one that contains the indices of the first occurrence of each unique element. So one was present for the first time at the index of zero. Then two was present for the first time at the index of two and so on. If you want to get each array back separately, you can unpack them. So here, what I did is create two variables, one called unique and one called indices. And then I assigned it the result of this operation over here. Then right below, I decided to print them with some nice labels. So now when we run this, what we should get back are the indices and the unique values. You can also get the total number of occurrences of each element using the return counts argument. So here we'll type in return counts and pass in true. And when we run this, it's going to tell us exactly how many times each element was present in our array. And this is returned in the same order as this one over here. So one has two occurrences, two has two occurrences, and six has one occurrence. The indices match on both of these arrays. What's nice about the unique method is that it also works with a 2D array. So in this example, we might have a matrix which contains some duplicate elements. As you can see here, we have two ones and two sevens. Now, when we run this code, what we're going to get as an output is this matrix over here. But if we were to print what was unique in this matrix, then we would get this as an output, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Those are the unique elements in this matrix. Now I'm going to leave the original matrix here for reference because next what I want to show you is that we can also specify the axis. So let's print np unique and pass in the matrix and use the axis argument and set that to zero. And for the second one, we will set it to one. Now, when we run this, what you're going to notice is that we're going to get back three matrices. And considering that each and every one of these columns and rows are unique, it's just going to return the full array for both of these. So let's modify the matrix to contain two rows that are the same and two columns that are the same. And to achieve this, we have to type in one, one, two, one, one, two. So now we have two rows that are exactly the same and six, six, seven. And that gives us two columns that are the same. So now when we run this, you're going to notice a slightly different output. Here we have the original array, which contains 112, 112, and 667. Now when we set the axis to zero, what we get as an output is 112 and 667, because as you can see here, two rows are the same. So this is the unique value. Then when we set the axis to one, we now work with the columns, which means we're going to get this as an output. And here, since we have 116 and 116, which are the same, it removes one of those and gives us this as an output. So once again, you can specify the axis to choose whether you want to work on rows or columns. Moving on, let's explore the concept of transposing and reshaping matrices. Earlier, we learned that we can easily reshape an array by specifying a new valid shape. In this example, I created some zeros, then I printed it, and finally I reshaped it with a new valid shape. This gives us an output of 10 elements, so the rule of thumb was that this product has to also equal 10 if we want this to work. Now, when we run this, what we will get as an output is our data being successfully reshaped. And we can also change this to one by 10, as long as the result of the product is 10, this is going to work. But now imagine that all you want to do is switch these back and forth. So five becomes two and two becomes five. Having to specify these values manually each time you want to reverse or change the axes is damn annoying. So what we're going to do instead is use a method that practically does the same thing as what we did right here. And to achieve that, we're going to type in transpose. Now, when we run this, it's going to transpose the shape. And what's nice about this is that we can type in data equals data dot transpose, print that data, and then we can transpose it immediately after. 
and this will work indefinitely. As you can see, it moves back and forth. And we can even do this a third time. And it will continue to change the shape from one to another. I mean, something nice to do would be to print the data.shape on each one of these so that you can see that as well. Now, when we run this, you'll notice that first it changed it to a two by five, and then it changed it to a five by two. It switches those, that's what transpose does. And if you're feeling extra lazy, we also have the most convenient letter in the universe that we can use directly on the array we want to transpose. This is the letter T, which stands for tractor. I'm just kidding, it stands for transpose. And to use it, all we need to do is type in T and T. And as you can see, it does the same thing.